Hello everybody and welcome. My name is Angelo Sokos and I work as a professional musical director and musician around the London area in the UK. So I have the privilege of testing the Yamaha P525, the brand new flagship P model from Yamaha, uh, new for kind of late October and early November 2023. And I'm going to be testing that against the Yamaha DGX670, which is like the kind of baby brother of it. It's a different series, but it basically is. It should be a lot worse. Um, then we've got the Casio 3100. Um, which is a really, really nice model. It's got a good action and a decent piano sound within it, so well worth comparing to the Yamaha to see how this holds up. Uh, then we've got the Pièce de Résistance. We've got the Kawaii uh, ES8, which is probably one of my favourite ever pianos. The action isn't quite there. It shouldn't be as good as these two, uh, but the piano sound is the only one ever where I've been gigging and people have come in and said to me, I genuinely thought there was a real acoustic grand because the sound of it is so good. Uh, also interesting to note on the Kawaii, ES8, the output from it has been incredibly good. Whatever technology Kawaii have in there, the output from it is so, so fantastic. I've had to turn it down to only, it's out of 100 what I can turn it up to, right? For the Kawaii, I've had to turn it down to six. This one is on about 70, that's on a 70. <laughs> Interesting, the Yamaha's. That's on 90, and this one over here is on 100. Uh, but that is on six so the output is just incredible and it sounds clear as anything and then it brings us on to our last one the Roland Phantom 8 so you might think it's a bit of a strange choice because it isn't piano with speakers but it's a uh, exact competitor to this because it's got the key bed and it's got the piano sound I'm using today of the Roland FP90 and the 90X which is an exact competitor to this so you may wish to uh, kind of well I think you'll likely be interested to see how it uh, marries up against it Okay, so let's give this a go. Uh, we're going to do um, pianos with no pedaling, so you can hear them just kind of crystal clear. Then we're going to do pianos with pedaling and compare them, and then we're going to do a little piece on each and compare that, and we'll kind of make up our mind and see what we think. So we're going to go always Yamaha to Yamaha DGX 670, Yamaha to the Casio 3100, Yamaha to the Kawaii ES8 and Yamaha to the Roland. This video is about the Yamaha comparing to others, so I'm less interested in the other pianos and more how this holds up to it. Okay, without further ado, let's give this a go. Okay, so I'm just stuck on my wire hold. <laughs> the hazard of spinning. Okay, so now we're going to have a go at this with a little bit of pedal compared to the others and see how it sounds against them. And then I'm going to go, as I said, with the Yamaha versus this and back versus this and back. So it's really nice and clear for you.
Okay, so my first observations are, uh, sorry, this one um, I can't cut the speaker for, which is why when I start to play it, I'm having to just uh, sort out the uh, kind of volume a bit because I don't want you to hear the additional speaker. These are all going specifically through uh, their um, left and right outputs. Okay, so uh, let's have a quick chat about that. The action on the Yamaha P525 is the best by far. There is absolutely no faulting it. It is absolutely incredible. I play Yamaha uprights, very quite expensive ones, um, and also Steinways and Kawaii's weekly. Uh, we also own a Yamaha grand piano, um, and this is the closest action to any grand piano that I've ever played. I have not played the Kawaii MP11. Okay, so I'm not sure, but this is the best that I've ever played, and I could play concertos on this for sure. Brilliant. Uh, the second best action is the Roland Phantom or the Roland FP90. Um, it is much of a muchness. They can basically they're as good as each other, but the Roland is a little bit softer. It's got a lot more dampening as you push the keys. This is a much much quieter key bed. I will do a key bed comparison if you wish after. Um, but so this is almost as good. I would say like if this is say 100%, this is like 99%. It will basically be on preference. And if you're a very skillful pianist, uh, you can probably just play that really well anyway. Um, I don't think that keyboard will hold anyone back from playing difficult music. The keyboard on the Yamaha DGX 670 and the keyboard on the Kawaii ES8 are actually very quite similar. Uh, they're both... Uh, plenty good enough for someone to perform on, but I don't think you could play a concerto on it. Too difficult. Uh, the keyboard won't keep up with you. Uh, but they are very, very good, and they're very similar. Despite the difference of price point, I think their keyboards are very similar. I love them. You don't fatigue so much on either of these keyboards, whereas you would fatigue more on these, for obvious reasons, because it's better and it feels a bit more realistic. The Casio, the poor Casio, uh, lags behind quite some way, uh, but very good for kind of uh, using as a MIDI device and also the keyboard is is pretty good. You could get away with playing grade eight pieces for sure. After that, you might start feeling a bit disappointed. Okay, so let's see how they hold up against each other with the most beautiful kind of pieces that we can think of and uh, just compare them together. Here we go. So we'll start with the Yamaha P525. Uh, lovely action to play. I feel like it's lacking some uh, resonance, though. Uh, it's okay. It's very clean, very clear. But I don't actually think it's going to be as exciting as its little brother, the DJ670. This will be very interesting. Okay, so interestingly, you'll, you'll see halfway through I put on the extreme reverb on it. You can't actually achieve that kind of reverb from this piano, which is a little bit sad, even if you really max it out. It's just too realistic. This is really over the top. That's not what I think a piano is going to ever sound like, even if you're in a huge cathedral, it's just too much. But it's nice to kind of make that comparison. Uh, don't judge me, <laughs> but I think I like the sound on that one better because it's there's more resonance there's more color, there's more of it, and they're using the exact same sound. I have the exact same sound programmed into bo both. 
Uh, so that's food for thought, isn't it? Okay, let's go over to the Casio. It is, it is, it is. Uh, let's remind ourselves of the Yamaha P525 and then we're going to the Kawaii. The Yamaha Kawaii ES8 certainly sounds significantly better, I would say like a world apart, from this through its own speakers. When you go through the output, obviously I praised the output for how good it is with getting an amount of volume in and not needing to turn it up much, but for my headphones I'm not seeing too much difference there, it would be nice to listen to this video back. But through its own speakers, the Kawaii outstrips everything with uh, no shadow of a doubt. I don't think there's any musician, and I don't think there's any person that would uh, differ from that. It just sounds so realistic through its own speakers. Uh, just like as a, as a fact, without me being biased, it's just it's got it's got to be the truth um i can't think of anyone that would disagree the options of sounds on the choir as well you're going to find something that's perfect for everybody so if you want this just for sounds coming out of its own speakers and you don't mind a slightly less good uh, key action you, you're going to need the Kawai for sure okay uh, let's try the roland i'll just do yamaha very quickly and then roland so we can hear the comparison it's like uh, testing a uh, perfume we can have a smell of coffee Uh, it gets clicks with that through the audio. That was interesting. So I, I played wrong note, actually. I just looked back to see what's going on. Um, then we've got... Um, I'm going to test this with a, another option of one of the best piano sounds on it, just to really have a decent comparison here. Okay, and then we're going to do the all-important speed test. We've got to find out which one's going to win. Uh, I think the Casio is going to be best, then I think it's going to be Roland, then I think it's going to be Kawhi, then the DJX, and then the Casio. Let's uh, put myself through the paces and see what we go for. So we're going to do um, some fast runs uh, through four fingers in the right hand, up and down. Uh, then we're going to do um, a chromatic scale in the bottom. 
Uh, I know it might be blurred by the time we get to the end one of what you guys are hearing, but the idea is that then I'll be able to make an informed decision and I'll tell you what's basically um, just how it is. That's faster. That's weird. Uh, the Cassie I'm really struggling with, so I'm not going to do it in the rest of the test. That is, uh, I, I don't mean like physically, I mean like you're, you're not going to be able to play that really fast uh, of any caliber of pianist. So it's, it's unnecessary to continue with the speed test for the Cassie. Um, okay, so the Kawhi. Okay, nice. Now we'll do a speed test rushing down the piano in a um, kind of arpeggio fashion, and then we'll do a chromatic scale up, and I'll give you my thoughts. So we'll go in the same order. That's, that's quite tricky, that one. Uh, the keys, the black keys, are way more plasticky than the white ones. So as soon as you hit it, you actually need to use a different pressure than you do the white keys. It's not the case on any of the other pianos. It's a bit strange. Uh, I'm not particularly impressed actually. That's a bit of a weird angle here, but yeah, that that is actually uh, that's actually faster, but it isn't as heavily weighted. But just it is faster. Kawaii next. Okay, really, really struggling on the piano to get that decent. Obviously, I play loads of acoustic grands, so everything I'm doing is, is comparing to acoustics. Uh, which is actually why I'm kind of messing up a bit because I, I'm used used to their exact action. That I find the kawaii really difficult to do that action on, uh, that that motion on, uh, and I don't think that's going to be uncommon among others too. The Roland should be very pleasant to do it on because it's very similar to a grand. Yeah, that's just a joy. That is an absolute joy. That key bid in the Roland. Uh, to do that kind of motion on, it's beautiful. Let's just do it once more with the Yamaha, see if I can get it as good. A little bit, a little bit. I'm, I am struggling with the weighting of the black keys, them being so plastic and the black ones being made of wood. Uh, it's really making a difference to me. This is much... Uh, this, well, this is the same across the board uh, this is very much not the same across the board uh, but I'm not saying it's bad it's just that um, remember I'm not used to this piano so um, yeah well that is that is what it is basically if you practice more on this maybe you get really good at it I don't know but um, fact not as similar to a grand piano as initially thought and certainly described on the Yamaha website okay lastly we're going to do a little chromatic scale up and see how we manage <laughs> This one is so fast, it runs away with you. So potentially, you're actually going to be more in time with this because... Mm -hmm. 
It's easier. I'm still struggling with the black keys, but it's easier than this. This is gets you basically you end up in a bit of a mess, to be fair. Sounds beautiful though, doesn't it? Okay, a koi. The kawaii is not as easy as these two to do those fast runs on. Okay, and then finally the Roland. I just, I just wanted to be really sure there. Um, basically my verdict is that if you practice on each piano individually on the Yamaha and the Roland the Yamaha P525 and the Roland FP90 or Phantom 8 you can get very good as suspected the Kawaii was great doing the it was then less good with the total mess and then the running up it ended up not managing at all. That, that, genuinely, that wasn't me. It ended up not managing at all. The Yamaha here, I thought was quite good across the board. Let's have a listen one more time. That's amazing to do the arpeggios on. And also the running down and the running up. Yeah, it's okay, but it runs away with you. Uh, the middle keys are weighted differently to the bottom ones. And you can hear that. It's really apparent. Like when I start, I do the same thing times three. How is it I'm good at the first two? And the final one, it goes a mess. It's because the weight in the keys change significantly enough that you're really put off if you play um, like acoustics a lot. This one I wasn't put off with. Nice and easy, that one. Uh, and then the Roland to finish. And the Roland again is quite easy to do. So basically, it's a much of a muchness. Uh, it's going to be practice on the instruments. The Casio is never going to get there. The Yamaha DGX and the Kawai ES8 are going to be pretty good. Well, very, very good, actually, to be fair. The Yamaha, I actually think, is just slightly better. Although it's cheaper, it is newer. Uh, but regardless of what it is, it's it's got a better keyboard action. Wonderful. Um, and these two are much for much, and so that's going to be how much you practice them. So there we have it. That was quite a detailed review. Um, and just to finish off, I'm going to play a little tune very quickly on each so you can get a nice little comparison and then maybe make your choice. Thank you very much for watching. It's been an absolute pleasure.
So my overall verdict is the Yamaha wins. I feel like if I practiced a lot on all pianos, the Yamaha is going to be the one I can play the best on with the least wrong notes. The only problem is, though, the sound isn't there for me. The richness you get from the Yamaha DGX is, is better. Even with the same sound, it is better. Its speakers sound much better too. Much better. I'm talking like a world apart. Um, the ES8, the speakers are incredible. The best speakers I feel on the market that you can have in a stage piano. Uh, it also has one of the best sounds. You don't really hear it through this. It's very strange. Normally DI'd in and through an audio interface it's best. But that live is just transports you to a different place. Um, the resonance and the sounds within the Kawaii outstrip the Yamaha by quite some way. The Roland, it's regardless of how it's sounding at the moment, going through you know, the interface, you can produce sounds on the Roland where the resonance is just awe-inspiring and you're never going to get close to that on this. I know that this is a different entity, this might be very expensive, etc. but it's still a fact that if you're looking for a wonderful action and a wonderful keyboard sound, the Roland Phantom is going to win, definitely for recording. If you want a piano which you can take with you and you can play concertos and you can play of a decent volume and you can you know, take it out to speakers and stuff, um, then you, you probably do want the Yamaha because of those speakers and the integrated uh, features of the piano sounds is, is are very, very good and the action is fantastic for a very high class pianist. The Yamaha DGX670 would be suitable for anyone who's trying not to play music as hard as a concerto and very, very fast runs and things like that. I actually think the better you are, the worse you will play on this, which is basically what I did. It's so different to a grand piano action. I felt like I messed up on it a lot more than I should have done. Uh, the Casio, I would actually discount. I think it's maybe wonderful for a home against a wall. But the speakers are really bad. Awful. I know they're tiny and you can get external speakers, but we're just talking about them as their entity. The speakers are so bad, I would even feel bad asking parents to buy that for a child. So definitely not. You could put it out to big systems and it was okay going through the audio interface and its internal sounds are actually pretty good, but it's a total mess to use. Um, just everything about that, even with the integration app and things like that. It, there's so many things about it that could be good, but they have, and the touch screen, you touch stuff all the time. That's not just me, you know, that's a worldwide issue with it. Um, so yeah, just no. Um, the Kawaii ESA, probably best for a wedding pianist. If you're not going to play crazy hard stuff, it will give you the best sound through its speakers you can possibly imagine to buy. I even think its sound is better than the uh, class above it, which is the um, S920, uh, the ES920, because this is a proper metal frame in the Kawaii ES8, so you're not um, constrained by the sun. The ES920 uh, bows in the sun, things like that, which is a bit weird, and it rattles a bit, and it doesn't feel great because in a plastic frame. This one, they've bothered to put a metal frame on, and it's, it's just better, to be fair, a lot better. And then we already spoke about that one. Okay, so that was quite detailed, uh, but I really wanted to be informative so that it was worth your time. Thank you very, very much for watching. And if you have any questions, please do comment below. I always try not to be biased. Um, however, I'm sure there's going to be the question of which one would you take with you. I think if I wanted people to hear me sounding really good, I'm going to have to take the Kawaii ES8. Thank you very much for watching. And it's been a pleasure. I'll see you again soon.